So we all use data, but how many of us get a chance to question data? I'm a social scientist who employs data working on the internet to study social behavior online. And I'm also involved in the work of an emerging field of study called critical data studies that adopt a critical reflexive approach to the rise of data and <coughs> the rise of big data. And today I'm going to tell you about this new emerging field of critical data studies using three main risks and three principles of critical data studies. So in 2011, I went to Nairobi, Kenya to study the people who I thought were represented by the map on the right hand side there, um, which you can't see very well, but is a map of geotagged articles um, in Swahili Wikipedia. And what I found by actually talking to the Wikipedians in the group, um, these were Kenyan Wikipedians that you can see on the left hand side, was that actually they weren't writing or editing Swahili Wikipedia. Swahili Wikipedia is actually written mostly by a bunch of um, really dedicated German missionaries. And so what this experience taught me was that one of the main risks of data is that it comes to stand in for people and that there's a leap being made between the data and the person that it supposedly represents. And that data and big data is being seen as somehow more complete, more accurate, more truthful than other types of knowledge. Um, and that data is somehow apolitical and free from human biases. So critical data studies is responding to this in three ways. Um, first of all, that data is never raw. Data is always interpreted. Data cannot speak for themselves. Other uh, researchers always shaping and framing the story that data tell. And thirdly, that data are inherently political and serve political interests um, of certain people and not others. And as geographers Dalton and Thatcher wrote, critical data studies asks whose data and what tokens to Thank you.